Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe or follow no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Fellas, front yard's looking a little crappy. Looks like we're going to have to call the lawnmower, man. Oh, I love that. I love that. Simple Job or 007 <laughs> in Mow Another Day. Wowie, guys. <laughs> Yeah, so this was my pick. I'd never seen it before, but I'd always heard things, especially about the virtual reality scenes, the the CGI, all of the polygons, and man, they are all true. <laughs> the aquarium pebbles? <laughs> Leave Agent Skittles alone, okay? He tried his best. He almost got to the door. <laughs> almost. I, th- I think I'm right there with you, fellas. This is... Uh... This is a movie that's definitely of the time. With the okay, fine, I'll just say it. They they took a really big risk, and I can't in a hundred percent confidence say that they pulled it off. <laughs> they pulled something off, man. These scenes where they are in the VR and just like roaming around or doing like uh, floating or flipping or whatever they're doing. This probably looked bad even then. I don't remember 1993 or whenever this was. But I remember probably like 97, 98, and special effects, VR special effects, that kind of stuff, CGI looked way better than this. It just reminded me of the reboot cartoon. And oh, even as a kid, oh, yeah. I hated the reboot <laughs> cartoon. Like, I, so I know people are going to shit on Beast Wars, <laughs> but Beast Wars looked 10 times better than this. It's definitely antiquated in the worst way, and it's something you just kind of have to get around. Because, like, otherwise the movie's just pretty good. It seems like a like a mid-budget sci-fi movie where, like, the idea is much better application of it, if that makes sense. It's, it's reminiscent of all, like, the, the tech thrillers that we're used to where the idea of virtual reality way back then kind of just had that, like, blank check where you could just kind of write what the fuck ever, and everybody's just like, yeah, that's what technology does, right? Yeah, they're in the mainframe. They locked us out. Uh, we've got to circle back and get into a back door, and I'm in. <laughs> Quick, <laughs> send me another $200,000 so I can re-upload this Windows 95 screensaver. Quick. <laughs> totally. And it, it, what tickled me, like, later in the movie where that one white coats town boss man that somebody's hacking in, it's almost like he was getting off on the notion that someone was sneaking into the mainframe. It's like, yeah, he's... Two minutes to lock down. Eh. He's slipping another knuckle in. <sighs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> what? Hands out of the, the cyber hole. The, oh, the tool <laughs> references don't come until later. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot. He spirals out just uncontrollably in this movie. But a little bit of context, right? So you have this gentleman, the scientist, and his name was Doctor James Bond because <laughs> it's yep. Pierce Brosnan, and yep. whatever name he has as a character doesn't matter. Nope. Got him down as 007 the whole time. He's trying to work on this virtual reality program, but the idea is that it's supposed to expand the human mind. Make you smarter. So the more you play these video games, the more exercise your brain gets. You know, total opposite of all the fucking campaigns during that time telling kids not to play Mario or you'll go blind. And your your palms are going to get hairy. And wait, was that a different thing? Nope. <laughs> Did this chimpanzee start out as a human? Is that how it got so hairy? You got it. Oh, no. Okay. Because we start out with a chimpanzee with a VR set strapped to its head. Yeah. And that that chimp doesn't last long because he his brain just expanded so much that he's like, man, I'm making a break for it. I'm getting out of this cage, and I'm going to take this guard's gun, and I'm going to point it at him. I fucking loved that bit. I absolutely loved it. Like, of course, you know, you got to do animal testing before you can do anything on humans, so on and so forth. And this monkey has just had enough. He gets out of his robo chair, starts strutting down the hall like Predator, looking through walls with his heat vision, walks up on a dude clearly not paying attention, but he still has the technological advancements to kind of zero in on the pistol in his belt, and he just blows the dude's head off. Well, no, like, the his, his little helmet is giving him objections, like, step one, acquire security guy's handgun. Step two, attack him with it. Step three, evase? Not evade, evase. I'm glad that you guys were paying attention to it, because to me, it was five minutes of shaky cam strapped to a bike helmet. (laughs) They only ever, aside from the time in the cage, they only ever show this chimpanzee as a helmet walking behind him. That is a toddler. 
thinking back at it, it kind of feels like the intros to all the Naked Gun movies, where it's just like a, a story cam and a light just running around the place. Yeah. We discussed before the show, like, this takes up, like, not a significant piece of the movie, but it's enough to where you kind of think that the chimp, the robo-chimp, whatever you want to call it, is a much bigger thread in the plot than it actually turns out being. Nope, that's all you get. That's all he is in the movie. Let's move on to Dr. 007 in bed with his wife. That's it. They're just in bed together. He, he like, shocks himself awake. He's had a little little bad dream, and she's like, oh, I oh, can't yeah. believe you're still thinking about that. Uh, or something. I don't know. And being the hog, he he tries to pass one by, and he's like, fine, I'm just going to go watch the neighbors beat the shit out of the kid. Yeah, and what time of fucking night is this that, you know, the next door neighbor's like, I'm going to wake up everybody at 2 a.m. to whoop my family's ass. <laughs> and I I know that it's none of their business, but Pierce Brosnan and everybody else in the neighborhood just, like, knows, like, outright. And they're like, yep, there goes Tim and the family. Boy, does he leave a mark on him. For real. We have Double O Hog, Dr. Double O, or Dr. Hog, as we want to put him. He's watching this abuse. He's actually neglecting his wife by playing way too much video games. You know, we, we've all been there. And in the overarching story of this, at the end, he ends up with the next door neighbor guy's family. And that's fucking wild. <laughs> it's a little questionable for sure. I think the movie's trying to tell us, like, you know, by the end of this movie, everything is kind of just like, all right, you know. Pierce Brosnan, he kind of figured out all his problems with the lawnmower, man. And the next door neighbors figured out their problem with domestic abuse. 10 out of 10. But what about Simple Jack out there as played by a guy that looks like Kurt Cobain at this point, but he will undergo <laughs> some changes. Oh, man, I don't know. He, he's so unique looking. And Brady, <laughs> you nailed it on the head with the Simple Jack thing, because like every scene he was in, I'm just like... I, it was a joke. I, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. No matter what he was mm-hmm. doing, I just picture Ben Stiller just like chewing scenery. <laughs> it's you can't not immediate thought as soon as you see him. Oh, that's the inspiration for Simple Jack. Like fucking obviously. Yeah, it's one hundred ten percent. The one fucking suspender strap. The uh, stammering. Please don't hurt my lawn mower. I was born dumb. These are lines in the movie. Oof. delivered yeah. by an adult male overcommitted to a mentally handicapped character who will then go on to look like a blonde Chris Gaines plowing <laughs> some lady. Fucking wild. I mean, that's that's character development. Yeah, that's a character makeover. Mm-hmm. Well, with his mental illness, it's not the only thing this movie handles poorly because like, his keeper is like some kind of out-of-pocket pastor or whatever and he's just there just to be like uh you might have autism but we call that satan so let me beat that the fuck out of you (laughs) yeah it's like oh you slept late today guess you're getting the belt okay (laughs) we're gonna sit here and discuss father molesty and we're also gonna call lawnmower man job simple job they both have a scene in Tropic Thunder. So we get Simple Jack and we get the Lazarus character of the gay preacher guy with Toby Maguire. Oh, yeah. I need to rewatch Tropic Thunder. So what you're trying to say is that this movie needs way more Robert Downey Jr. 100%. I mean, I feel like most movies could use a little bit more Robert Downey Jr. at this point. You know what? That era of Robert Downey Jr. would probably be perfect for Simple Joe. <laughs> you know, he's just that little bit of a fringe, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, old 007 is uh, in his in his basement or whatever, trying out this VR game. I don't know if we can call it a game, but he's he's flying and falling and floating. His wife's like, what's next? Fucking. (laughs) And all of us look at Brady. Yes. (laughs) Yes. uh, I'm actually surprised that wasn't brought up somewhere in the movie like this could potentially be some sort of some sort of like service for pornography then everybody would understand completely no no that's that's 50 years in the future oh right in the 2000s (laughs) that's not even real stop (laughs) unfortunately though pierce brosnan is just like stuck in his basement while his woman just like yelling at him about stuff that is actually important now he'd been working so hard on this project this vr project to expand human thought forever and it's gotten to the point where he's kind of just been given leave like he's obviously burnt out go home and figure shit out he's not taking any time to just take a break he's legitimately just tearing his own relationship apart and then the movie forgets about it yeah 
Yeah, back at his place of work, they're yelling at him like, oh, this chimp was the last straw. Like, we've got to move on to a human. And he's like, we're not ready for a human yet. We, we've got loads of testing to do. And then he gets home and he's like, you know what we could use? A human. And where do oh. you find a human? Mowing your front lawn, picking his nose, yeah. yelling about, I'm good with small engines and such. I even like mustard <laughs> and biscuits. Oh, man. He does build, I mean, to his credit, he does build a really nice lawnmower that looks like it came out of like a, you know, one of those uh, chopper shows out of the mid 2000s, West Coast or Orange County or something. It looks like it came out of that. It's nice. I was actually surprised he didn't use those skills on other things. You know, like I get he's quote unquote the lawnmower man, TM, but giving a man of his abilities, I feel like that would have been a little bit more grease for the wheels for the rest of the movie no um pierce brosnan just happens to look out his windows like oh cool yeah i'm gonna turn him into a fucking vr nerd yes yes yeah let's bring him in here and strap him to a magic fingers vibrating massage bed and then put a virtual boy on his face <laughs> a fucking strobe tool album art into his brain to make him smarter all those goddamn polyrhythms by danny carey's got him like ah, ah. <laughs> But let's talk about the video game, right? Like, I know that James Hogg and all that stuff never really calls it a video game, but he also never discusses what the not video game is set to accomplish. It's almost like he's playing like Star Fox 64 or some shit, just flying through obstacles and just trying to get to the finish line, like an actual finish line. Yeah, at one point he brings in the little boy and is like, hey, you guys play together or something. You can do uh, Wave Race 64 or whatever. (laughs) race through the tubes they're fucking doing like flips and dodging spike walls and then down in the bottom right corner a little frog guy appears and he's like a barrel roll (laughs) joe is that banjo kazooie i don't know there's a big doo-doo on the floor it might be conquer (laughs) he's having a bad fur day uh so they give simple jack whatever you want to call him job a shot of vitamins do we have any idea what that's supposed to be just a shot well, you know, it's just there to fortify, young boy. I don't, I don't know about that because you got three levels of growth here. You got him and his religious stuff, so he's got the prayers. He's got the <laughs> VR the games, <laughs> so he's got the training. And then with Pierce Brosnan giving him the needle <laughs> injections, he's got the vitamins. He's got all three key steps to be a little Hulkamaniac. I knew, I fucking knew uh, where you were going with that. He fucking boomed me. Brother, 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 brother. Oh, <laughs> well, there is a certain point, like, in the movie where, or at that point, handsome Job, like, just that goes around shirtless and just starts beating the shit out of everybody. Oh, man. Sexy yeah, ne- Job. Next thing you know, he's out there working on the yard, and the widow or whatever next door is like, well, hey there, Job, would you like to come upstairs and get some lemonade? Oh, there's a there's a lot going on in this part because one, she's got the vapors. He doesn't know oh, yeah. what that is. And I don't think we mentioned him before, but he has like a bit of a wingman. Like there's another gardener, I forget mm-hmm. his name. But he is just like the coolest fucking guy. Like he is very aware of this guy's condition. And he just takes the time to just be like, hey, it's all right, do what you gotta do. But in this case, he's like, Bro, this is your one moment. You get in there and you knock out a home run. Dude, yeah. I think he called it like a knucklehead, like get in there, man. <laughs> Job, what what did you get while you were up there? She gave me a hand, Job. Oh, no. uh. <laughs> the lemonade wasn't even good. It was country time. <laughs> Instant <sighs> bullshit. He's fucking heated. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they're heated because they, you know, they do show us the sex scene, and the whole time I'm just like, ah, dry January, huh? Yeah, that scene <laughs> does not need to be in. I'll just say that Th- there's two of them, right? Neither one of them need to be in this movie. Let's go ahead and bring this down to, like, a solid 90 minutes. Something. I I don't know. Like, I totally get it. Like, it could have been implied. And there's other things in this movie that are implied that could have been shown. But this, nah. This is what counts. There's a titty, all right? There's a titty in the scene. And I'm not even able to enjoy it because Simple (laughs) Job and his bad He-Man wig are down there like... (laughs) Yeah, he's like, oh my god, it's so wet. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) So next thing we know after this, uh, dude starts looking like an Italian luggage salesman just hanging out at the, <laughs> just hanging out at the gas station. Old Job Vuitton at that point. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, he's there because he was trying to like rendezvous with what's her name that he just kind of like smashed or whatever. And how could that lady not be attracted to Job when he was dressed identical to Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men? <laughs> just a blonde version. Oh, I guess if he let his hair down anymore, he would definitely have the same cut. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, dude. so it's Eric Roberts with a He-Man wig dressed as Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific. But if you watch the movie, you'll agree. Just going back to that sex scene, I have written down that she rides him like a broken pogo stick, whatever that means. Oh, <laughs> oh. I know exactly what that means. The man's a broken pogo stick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she looks like the equivalent of like a water mattress, just swaying back and forth. There's no real motion there, but there's a titty. Well, yep, yeah, there there is a titty, a single sure. titty. Why aren't waterbeds more popular anymore? Scoliosis? Maybe. I don't know. Mm. I had one as a kid, but only because nobody else wanted it. It kind of sucked. Well, that's probably why. It's also yeah. why there's definitely an extinction of race car beds. And everybody knows those are the coolest beds. I got a Lambo. Want to come see it? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of driving around, we get like a little like hokey little bit where handsome Job gets to hang out with Danny from Last Action Hero. And this is the movie's attempt to kind of like for some bonding like dude the kid that plays danny he's an excellent child actor like you never once think that he's acting he's just a kid fantastic but like he's paired with this guy who just like just driving mindlessly through traffic and almost hitting a bunch of people and just having a goof it doesn't matter they're extras <laughs> where are you taking me job I'm going to get us some French fried potatoes. And then they get inside that fucking cafe and he has a brain aneurysm. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, uh, he, he's like, it turns out I'm a d- an adult now, so I'm going to give you all my comic books. Go out to the truck and get all my comic books. Oh, I've got a migraine. We got to go. Actually, I got to go. Sorry, leaving you here. Bye. Don't you just love the reaction from everybody else in that little diner? Because this is a small town. They're all aware who handsome Job is. And he's having a fucking crisis. And some dumbass lady just looks around just like, Oh, look at that man. Like, you know who that is. Fucking help him. <laughs> no, it's, uh, he, at that point, he is starting to hear people's voices inside his own mind. So I think that's actually what she is saying in his mind. Like, to herself. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. It's either that or he became a scanner. So <laughs> it is what it is. Next thing I have on my list is he fucks the blonde lady again, spirals out some more, and then uh, <laughs> we have many unneeded VR animations. In 1992, this would have had to have had like 256 megabytes of RAM, but it's going to load real slow. <laughs> Just want to discuss one thing. Gentlemen, before he gets some more quote-unquote lemonade from that blonde lady, he's sitting on this fucking bouffant couch like something that you would have seen in a plantation and he's watching television (laughs) and the camera switches from his face which just looks like normal job who is now intelligent so he's got the hair pushed back into you know feathered wings for style and he's watching tv and then it pans back to him full body on the couch and he is in tight blue jeans no shirt he is laying uh with his waist stretched completely out propped up on one arm like he is some sort of fucking marble sculpture this is the point in the movie where he grabs some product puts it in front stares directly into the camera and just cannot believe it's not but yes because otherwise it's it's just frivolous and i know it's just like another moment for like a lemonade lady to come and just like you know just comes by to sow her oats and all that stuff but can we talk about that because we better at that point, Handsome Job has this wonderful idea of like, hey, you know what I just saw? Demolition Man. Let's go have cyber sex. Pony, the wild mambo, the hunk of chunk. Yep, and this is the movie where they invented cyber sex because they go back and do that thing, that thing, and they turn <laughs> into, from two caterpillars into a single cocoon, they dissolve into a goo. This is the grossest sex scene that I've ever seen in my life. What even is it? It's hentai snuff. That's what it is. <laughs> but, it, like, even in the context of the movie, it kind of just, like, doesn't make sense. Because he took her there for a sexual time. But everything uh-huh. that he was projecting into VR or, like, the cyberspace for her to enjoy was fucking nightmare fuel. 
they don't even touch each other in this, like really touch each other aside from virtually, right? And they're like right, right beside each other. What's the point? Just go, you know, she's right, she's right there. Let's go blow this guy. I mean, she even looked down to see her hands and there was proof that she had cyber titties. So I don't know. <laughs> he could have been getting them fucking Laura Croft triangle tits, but instead he turned into that fucking... <laughs> Oogie McTosh looking monster with the projecting mouth and he was like blah, 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 attacking her and she's screaming has a mental breakdown he melts her brain and then takes her home and is like I'm just gonna psychically maximum overdrive prequel mow this lawn from up here on the balcony oh is that what that was because I yeah. totally thought he just left the shit running <laughs> <laughs> no it's like wow that that grass is getting a little long might as well while she's just out i'm gonna you know just give it a little trim it'll be all right yeah got the mow lawn shake the tree this guy's multitasking is that a steve miller band reference yes gonna start calling <laughs> him maurice Whoop, woo. yeah i got you next thing i got is he realizes that, that he can start moving things with his mind like that lawnmower he starts lifting up the yeah. chair with his mind and right there is the inherent problem with like the last third or quarter of the movie is that when he gets these cyber powers, for lack of a better term, they're all kind of lame. I mean, I'd take them, right? Well, he made toothpaste happen, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just like how he talks about how uh, he's starting to reclaim parts of his mind that we haven't seen since wizards and alchemists walked the earth. Homie, those aren't real. <laughs> he start, yeah, he starts to be like philosophical and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it's this weird dissonance because the other half of the movie, you have Pierce Brosnan still just like chewing as much scenery as he can. Now, mind you, he is the best actor in this movie, and I fault him none. Mm -hmm. But how they use him in scenes is literally the least interesting way to do anything. He's just in an office screaming mm -hmm. at a bald man. And then that guy's boss gets mad, so now he has to go to Washington and scream at another bald man. I don't know. I just feel like they should have given him more to do besides just kind of, I don't know, yell at bald people. Listen, alopecia is a serious condition. It affects more than 500,000 Americans every year. If you have alopecia, please see your doctor about about that, you fucking baldy. I don't know. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were talking about the guy he was yelling at, right? That was his name. Al? Alopecia? <laughs> no. That was actually, I think that was Hank Schrader from Breaking Bad. Uh, pretty sure that was him, if we're talking about the same guy. Friggin' meth. Maybe. I think he's the the boss's boss. The guy in Washington okay. who was just like, who would randomly pop up on a TV and be like, yes, do my bidding. Well, the big thing about this is 007 is like, this has unlimited possibilities with regard to learning disabilities. And, and the boss is like, yeah, or it could be a weapon. Dude, yeah. <laughs> who would not? Who would not want to weaponize psychic cowboys? <laughs> So in his mind, when he walked into the room haphazardly and saw him move that chair, the first thing that ran across his brain was like, huh, that man's a gun. Mm, yes. Yep. But in reality, he wasn't a gun. He was merely a Tron cosplayer who got <laughs> yeah. on an episode of Pimp My Ride and brought in a lawnmower. And you got to see Exhibit put fucking dual exhaust on it. See, I actually have him down uh, for all you mid and late 90s WWF fans as Max Moon. That's what he looks like to me. Max Moon. Oh, speaking of WWF Chandler, did you catch who was wrestling on the television whenever he sent his lawnmower to do his bidding? I saw that it was going on. They said WrestleMania couldn't tell who it was. Tito Santana. Oh, all right. All right. That's a classic. Well, you heard it here first, folks. If you watch WWE... You'll die because of a lawnmower. Yep. Or Vince McMahon will shit on your forehead. Uh, <laughs> and no. then use the lawnmower. <laughs> the next thing I have is that he mows the coffee table. I don't remember that, but I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, because he like he he sends his little lawnmower to munch on that dude that was beating the crap out of his family. I know the movie's really <laughs> trying to sell this like as a scary moment. And, you know, oh, fuck, this huge lawnmower is chewing up everything in the living room, chasing this man. It's, it just turns into a comedy routine where yep. I can just slip in the Benny Hill theme. He's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and he's just trying not to get his feet nibbled on. 
It's uh, fucking, it's dead alive. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. I kind of wish there was more like that because I know this movie's called The Lawnmower Man and mm-hmm. there's the association of now Handsome Job with the lawnmower, but there's only one lawnmower related fatality in this entire picture. It's the gentleman we just mentioned. Yep, yep. They make it count though. I really like the scene that follows this up with like the cop and the doctor. That was one of my favorite parts of the movie because the cop is so just like ho-hum about some <laughs> dude being all over the place back there. The scientist man is like, so where's the rest of the fella? And the cop's just like, oh, it's just over in the bird bath. Don't worry, he's not going anywhere. Anyways, uh, James Hogg. <laughs> Where'd Where'd the rest of him go? Oh, lawnmower ate him. Oh my God, was he chewed or, <laughs> or swallowed? <laughs> Mulched. <laughs> Mulched, yes. But uh. you see him like perched up on a, on the porch, just like giving mine bullets to him. Like, yeah, accidents happen. He fell down some stairs. <laughs> he's just out in broad daylight, just murdered several people. And he's just over there standing there all hard. Bro. That's uh, unfortunate. Guess I'm going to have some more lemonade. He is never <laughs> not sweating oh, in that yeah. fucking suit. Drenched. And you kind of think like, oh, it's part of the character because like his brain's working overtime, you know, like the BTO song. And he just can't fucking handle it. No, you can definitely tell this thing can't breathe and he needs like a minute out of it. <laughs> Skin's all flushed. He's having a hard time, man. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, uh, next thing I've got, I don't even know why, honestly. He gets himself into, like, a Van Gogh painting in VR. Anybody have anything on this? Yeah, he's going to upload himself to the Matrix. That's uh, that's where I started to really lose interest. It turned into, like, Clockwork VR Orange. No, this right here is where this movie takes it from, okay, I'm following you, this is getting a little weird, but I'm following you, to completely off the rails, and for some reason, I am more in. He is talking about some wild shit. He's talking about going to a new electric dimension. He's he's going to project himself into the mainframe computer and become the Cyber Christ. This is some Videodrome shit. I'll hail the new flesh. This was the point where I just wrote the word pain real big because as soon as he turns around and there's that face reveal, it's 110% yep. the same face they used in RoboCop 2 and the nuke eaten monster. And like the government's on his tail too. So like he's in, holding this house and they send like two goons at him or whatever. And he fucking just zaps them as soon as they get out of the van. And he jumps out and he's like, oh, check it out, guards. And he does that little thing like to show that he's using these powers. It, he like kind of squints one eye and his head vibrates <laughs> left to right real hard. And then they turn into Gittles and it looks it looks delicious. <laughs> it's, it is kind of funny. Like these two agents kind of look at each other. It's like, huh, look a little bubbly, fella. Taste the rainbow. Speaking of bubbly and a rainbow, you guys remember lime flavored Skittles? Well, I've got a lime-flavored bubbly here. This is still, for a couple more days, a dry January. So what I've got here is bubbly. This is a lime-flavored sparkling water with natural flavors, 0.0%. True to its name, it is bubbly. Just a hint of lime, like someone described the taste of lime to you, and that's what you get. That's what's in this can. (laughs) It could go for some more lime, but honestly, like, it's it's fine. Like, it's easy to drink. It's not sweetened. So it's just, it's just water with, like, a lime suggestion. Sign me up. I dig that because now the movie's trying to suggest that Handsome Job has the power to turn people's bellies into hell portals where they get sucked into one skittle at a time. Ooh, are they getting turned into the AMC Dune popcorn bucket? Oh, Ooh. the flashlight they're trying to pedal it's a popcorn thing. <laughs> the wormussy. The, the wormussy. Oh my god. <laughs> That's going in the tags. That's what blows us up. Yeah, we're really off the rails here. There's just a bunch of chaos that happens from here on out. I've got 007 trying to hack into the mainframe from the outside because Homeboy is trying yeah. to project his body into the mainframe and become one with the internet or something. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Basically, he's Ultron from the Avengers movies. He's just trying to get into the internet. That's all. But in this particular case, like the place where he's trying to jump into is more of like a it's more like a node. It's, you know, like he still has to Ooh. find the door to the internet. 
Yeah, well, uh, he took the wrong hypertext link, uh, and I don't know. At, at some point, there's a bunch of guards, and he takes one, and with his mind, is like, you should put that gun to your head and pull the trigger. And he's like, well, okay, I guess I'll do that. And that's the end of that guard. So, Well, that's because he saw him drive up with his buddy, because like, mm-hmm. he drove in tandem with his gardener friend. And he's like, hey, man, we're best friends. You go get him, partner. Because, like, the, the gardener fella, he doesn't know anything. He's just the guy's yeah. friend. And the, the armed gentleman running at him shoots him. And so, of course, the guy just uses his mental powers to just fuck this guy up. I'm going to drive you up to Zordon's lair, and you can go in, and I hope that there's pussy in there for you, but I hope that there's at least some lemonade. <laughs> oh, yes. why, why isn't that guy Cheech Marin? <laughs> he spilled... <laughs> all the lemonade and that's what drew in all the vr bumblebee swarms oh yeah this is a swarm of computer viruses but they're actual virus looking things because that's what we thought computer viruses were like in the early 90s actual bugs yeah Are, is it not like that does it not look like gex from playstation i'm poof, <laughs> news to me <laughs> They are all fucking space invaders. That's what computer viruses are. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were just bugging people because, like, you know, it's an early effect. So mm. it didn't quite have, like, the real world consequence. They just kind of flew at people and they screamed and, I guess, ran away? Yeah, I don't know. They had that one. They had that effect ready. They could use it. It was licensed. They were like, well, we might as well. Yeah, you know, it's like they're talking to the director. It's like, no, you don't understand. It's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. All you got to do is drag and drop. Wow. 60 of them. You can get over. Yes. I was going to say, you can get over 50 assets on the screen at one time. Incredible. <laughs> What's that baby running with? Four gigs of RAM. Dang. <laughs> so this upsets Jack. Uh, being not as simple as he once was. So he storms in and straight up destroys a whole stack of five and a half inch floppies. Yeah, he does. Well, hell, he walks in on Boss Man trying to, like, hide a CD. (laughs) I don't know what the fuck he was doing. Uh, It was the new fucking Hanson album. He didn't want him to take it. Ooh, 1992? (laughs) Yeah, they get, he got to be oom-bopping his way down. Yeah, right. that's it. I mean, he's got to eventually get to this, what, what's it called, an Orbitron? Whatever they had, you know, uh, they'd bring it in like once a year during elementary school and you get to play on it. Oh, man, the gyro thingy? Yeah, the gyrotron, oh, yeah, yeah. gyroscope, whatever. Gyroscope, it's a fun thing. Yeah. They'd have it at carnivals. Well, you know it's not fun? Strapping yourself into one of those and having your brain turned into cheese. What if it's like good cheese? Hmm. I'm talking like Winsleydale. What about like a solid pepper jack blend? Ooh, man. Can this movie uh, just like end with them making grilled cheeses? Yes, man. That would, be, that would have been better than what we got. That's what you need at the carnival is just like a grilled cheese stand right next to the gyroscope so that, you know, every time you get off it and vomit, you got something to fill you right back up. Get you some funnel cakes, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, all that sounds way better than, well, like, what I saw. Because, like, you know, Pierce Brosnan, James Bond himself, he runs into this place with a newly acquired satchel of C4 because the movie's got a movie. And the way he does it, I mean, has the fucker not played Gold Knight? You don't start planting <laughs> shit at the door. You wait till you're in the middle and you do it backwards. <laughs> that just rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, no, all that I've got is that he starts spiraling out into a cyber galaxy so that he can once again become a cyber Jesus or something. He's floating around on his crucifix. J- yeah, just rolling an inordinate amount of D20s. Yes. <laughs> inordinate amount. I will point out that Pierce Brosnan, as he's getting absolutely cyber molested, in the real world, he feels pain. And him being on that gyroscope... He was putting on a show. It literally looked like he was having a really bad time. He was probably done. Like, okay, man, you've had me strapped into this thing for five minutes. No, we want it to look like you're in pain. So what are we going to do? Don't let him out. And they're just spinning and be oh, like, please no. stop. Cut to Kylo Ren. More. <laughs> More. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes total sense because, like, he's not, like, a super international star at this point. He's still Remington Steel. Fuck that guy. <laughs> For real, for real. Just sassy side piece. Yeah, I've I've just got, this is silly written down as my note for this scene. Because this was silly. <laughs> That's the best note ever. Because 
I, I see that coming from the top. I see that coming mm. from the production company. They see all the dailies and they're just like, this is silly. Like, they, they have no other way to put that into words. Uh, 007's about to stumble off of that thing and just trying to get back on the Big Dipper or something. Oh, that dude. He's dead. Mm. Straight up dead. Lost him in the haunted house. Hey, well, you know what? Speaking of lost, guess who's running around this newly explosive place? Hurley? That's right, Danny from Last Action. <laughs> Danny from Last Action Hero. He just he's there because stakes have to happen. Yeah, yeah. No, no reason for him to be in there at all. He's just like guy I met a few days ago. What what's going on? Don't kill Peter. You let him out, and everything will be okay, Joe. And he's like, blah, 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 and fucking lets the little boy out. Pierce Brosnan's <laughs> like, it was a trick. And we get some of the absolute worst running from explosions down a hallway shots I have seen in my life. They actually, the final one, now mind you, they're all bad, but the final <laughs> one fucking cracked me up. Suddenly, Pierce Brosnan jumps onto the ground right in front, but softly. And there's an explosion sound effect. And you can just go, oh my god. The reaction that pulled out of me was, "Oh!" I mean, there's these cute little models of the hallway and the the actual facility and stuff getting blown to bits. I'm just like, okay. The part of this that got me was, um, okay, so there's, there's a little struggle with the door trying to get open or whatever. Pierce Brosnan's character knows that there is a timer on this this bomb. It's going to explode. Right. And, and like, not a, a cyber explosion, a real-life explosion. So they're struggling <laughs> with this door, and it finally comes unlocked. Danny or Billy or whatever his name's on the other side, there's, like, a minute left before this whole place goes up. But they still have to take the time, like, a full five or ten seconds just to, like, hug each other. Be like, yo, bro, we're here. We're together. <laughs> Now let's run! Maybe not at full speed, but we're gonna run! <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, they just kind of saunter mm-hmm. off, you know, hands held and all that stuff. All the while, our cyber bully is just in there just trying to find an out. Like, he's in, like, th- this hexagon mm-hmm. room, because I guess hexagons are the best of gone. And he's just trying to find his little outlet. And I understand that, like, he knows that the bombs are about to go off and that he's trying very hard to find the door as quickly as possible but it just looks like a fucking mess it just he's it's just like yeah. cyber word salad you know like a visual salad of just nonsense it's just a mess visually so brady i need a i need a dm uh judgment on this is he waiting to roll a d20 does he need a nat 20 to get in is that what we're waiting for in this particular situation I would have to say that as the big bad, you know, he was a former Mm -hmm. player character, probably the DM's player character, a goofy player character, one that everyone made fun of, that he turned into the big bad. Big bad got defeated by the other players, but he doesn't want him to die. So no matter what he rolls, hence why there's so many D20s rolling, no matter what he rolls, he's going to get the result he wants just at the last second though yeah that's fair because that's exactly what happened there's one second left on all these c4s or the last one anyway the most important and he gets zooted into the internet and you're like huh i really hope this isn't sequel based (laughs) well before all this he does drop a line that you know is we think at the time it's just kind of a throwaway line oh you know once he gets in and he takes power as this cyber christ or whatever his calling card is going to be Making every phone on the planet ring all at once. You fucking got him. Fucking got him. That's what I'm talking about. Fucking yep. prank, dude. <laughs> yeah. That, uh-huh. that was his big thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Whenever, like, okay, so all the phones are ringing at the same time. So across the world, almost in this cacophony of, like, answerings, he hears, like, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of voices in multiple languages all saying hello and the last clip we get from the movie is this super you know like garbly vacorder style uh techie sounding voice going is your refrigerator running <laughs> Bam! and then it just slams like to the end of the film so now he's just microsoft sam being a bully on the internet that's it mm. you know like let me talk to your mother and that was it that's that's the, that's where we ended up oh. 
in the internet, it's all Epstein's Island. Oh, no. <laughs> all. You were going with the Goonies. <laughs> nope. Going Stephen Hawking. <laughs> this movie, to me, it was cheesy and funny. Like, I was laughing at just how corny it all seemed. While it was trying to be smart and cutting edge, and I don't know if it ever really coalesced into anything that I would say was great. If we could have cut about 30 minutes out of this movie, I would say it would be a movie that I wouldn't watch all the time, but it would definitely be on my top watch list for just, hang on, let me put that on so I can laugh for like 15 minutes and then show some people and be done with it. You know, I think at best this movie is liminal, but otherwise the biggest issue that I had with everything was that the movie either didn't have the budget that it absolutely required to pull this off, or it was made like five or six years too late or 20 years too early it's like this weird 90s cyber movie where they didn't quite know everything and when they try to fill in the blanks the stuff that they filled it with just seemed kind of as you mentioned brady corny what i liked about the movie was pierce brosnan i think he knocked it out of the part regardless of what the movie was trying to do he's an excellent actor and every scene that he's in he's believable as this like semi-mad scientist other than that it's just okay, and I feel like I should have been way more brewed up before I even started this thing. So I think I probably enjoyed this more than either of you. I didn't love this, but I thought it was entertaining front to back. It gets ridiculous. It goes off the rails, and I think that's the point that I'm actually in more than any other point. It gives me a lot of, as I mentioned earlier, Videodrome vibes, but Videodrome is definitely the better movie. Nonetheless, you have a lot of wild and nostalgic VR images, CGI images in this that you can't really get anywhere else because everyone else does them better. Oh, uh, well, there you have it. That was The Lawnmower Man from... The 90s, probably. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show, leave it in that comment section below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to bash the bell icon too, or whatever you've got. Hit all the buttons. I don't care. But you don't want to miss what we have brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on them their social media. We got them all. We're all over the place. You can find us anywhere. Podcasts are available. We're even on YouTube. Give us a shot. We're kind of funny sometimes. And if you don't like us, then, you know, maybe we'll strap you into one of those gyro things at the local carnival, put a Virtue Boy on your face, and make you look at Tool album art and Danny Carey's fucking polyrhythms until you get not so b b b b brain dead. That sounds like a lie. Can you just, like, run my ass over with a lawnmower? (laughs) (laughs) 